It is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll start again. Good evening, everybody. And um, uh, thank you all for being here tonight to, to participate in our annual meeting. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to um, be with you all tonight and for the uh, board and the staff of True North Aid to be able to share uh, this, the, the wonderful successes that we've seen over the past 12 months um, and, uh, and to uh, hopefully um, uh, give you some insight into the organization, the work that's being done and where we're going. So again, thank you for giving up part of your evening. I know some of you are, uh, have been hoping to watch a hockey game um, and uh, we're gonna aim to do this in, in uh, the time allotted. So we're gonna try to get through this on time and give you part of your evening back um, and uh, uh, and, uh, and make sure that, uh, that you have, uh, have the rest of your night uh, for other things. So my name is Scott Harris and I'm the chair of the board of directors and it's a pleasure to join you. Um, the, um, as we get started though, I do wanna just take a moment to invite all of you to uh, recognize the indigenous territories where you may be uh, as we start the meeting. I happen to be uh, in my home uh, on the, you know, in the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe and Algonquin peoples. Um, and, uh, you know, as an organization, uh, we are uh, deeply aware and, and grateful uh, for our relationship with Indigenous communities all over this country. So again, we would just invite you to um, uh, acknowledge the territory that you're taking this meeting from. It's also my pleasure to uh, introduce to you the board of directors, uh, my, my, my uh, counterparts on the board of directors. So I think we have their pictures. They're all here with us tonight. Um, uh, so we have Ali Cooper, who's our secretary and treasurer. Um, uh, Bob Langlois, who is uh, a board member, uh, Katie Koopman, who's a board member, and Katie's on screen, at least on my screen, and uh, Kim Sigerson, who's uh, a board member as well, and who is joining us, uh, but is in transit up to one of the many communities we work with. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we thank Kim for, uh, for double duting. Uh, well, I suppose we're probably entertainment on his long drive. So uh, welcome, uh, welcome everybody, and thank you for being part of the the meeting tonight. In addition, some of you may be aware that we have an Indigenous Advisory uh, Council that we work with, uh, in, including um, uh, Norman McCallum, um, who is uh, an elder from the Woodland Cree Nation, um, and as well as Christ Christine Lefebvre, who is from the Kitchener-Waterloo area. And um, they have been a tremendous resource to us as we continue to do the work uh, that, that, uh, that we are engaged in. And I have the pleasure, I believe, of having Norm come and do a, uh, a greeting for us today. Okay, it's Norman on behalf of True North Aid and all the sponsors, we wanna thank you. You see the beautiful lake in the background? That's Kinu Lake. And that's where some of your gifts have gone to this beautiful part of the country. This is the home of the Woodland Cree Nation. Once again, I want to thank the sponsors. I want to thank True North Aid for everything. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, Norman. Um, and uh, finally, uh, as we start the uh, meeting, I, I just wanna take a moment to introduce you to our staff. Uh, so, so most of you will know Ken, who has been with the organization since 2017 and is our fearless national director uh, who uh, provides uh, guidance to us, as well as uh, Tamara Stafford, who's the executive assistant, and Amanda Stoke, who's the program and communications director. Those of you working on projects uh, will know both Tamara and Amanda very, very well and uh, have inevitably fallen in love with them. Uh, and I, it's my pleasure to introduce our newest staff member, Emily Everett, who is uh, our project development and logistics coordinator. And we want to welcome Emily to the organization. Uh, we were very happy to, uh, to, to get to meet Emily and for her to be able to come and uh, contribute to the work that we're doing. Um, Ken, is there anything you want to say about the staff before I, uh, before I get started? You're on mute, though. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, everybody. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, yeah, we have a we have a tremendous staff, and I, I just want to say I'm very proud of, of each and every one of them for the the work they continue to do and the relationships that they've built with so many uh, throughout Canada, both here in the south, with the with the donors, and of course so many uh, the precious uh, friends now uh, throughout northern Canada. Um, and, and Scott, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just introduce um, the three here on this screen. Uh, Marilyn Schuert, um, who you're yep. going to hear from in a few minutes. Um, she is uh, our volunteer uh, donor relations uh, person, and she meticulously thanks our donors. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Carolina Budeman, uh, she is one of our, our um, project leads for our Indig Indigenous Youth Opportunities uh, Program. Um, and so she's on contract as a lead uh, for that very important program. And then recently, uh, Bethany Sorici um, has been uh, helping us with budget and uh, internal analysis, and she too is a part-time uh, contract position. So very grateful for the entire team that we have. Excellent. Thank you all. And I know, I think most of you are here tonight. So uh, thank you for joining us uh, on the call as well and thank you for all the work that you do on behalf of the board we're deeply grateful for the leadership of all the staff and volunteers that work on the organization um with no further ado though i'd like just to move right into the agenda we have quite a bit that we want to to, to present tonight uh and so with that i'm going to turn it over to tamara who's going to walk us through our 2020 financial statements um and uh, uh some analysis that we've done regarding this Oh, thanks, Scott. Um, like Scott said, I am Tamara Stafford, and I am an executive assistant for True North Aid, and we're just going to dive right in. Um, we'd like to acknowledge DBK out of Hamilton for conducting our 2020 audit. DBK audited the financial statements of True North Aid in accordance with general Canadian generally accepted auditing standards, which comprise the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2020, and the statements of revenue and expenses and changes in fund balances and cash flows for the year end and notes to the financial statements, including a summary of significant accounting policies. The auditor stated the financial statements presented fairly in all material respects and found nothing of significance to report. Well, now I'm gonna look into the audit report from DBK. Uh, revenues, so our revenue for 2020 was $926,000, which was a 148% increase of, over revenue in 2019. The humanitarian expense for 2020 was 437,000, an increase of 59% over 2019. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the operating expenses. Operating expenses for True North Aid in 2020 was $94,000, which is only 18% of our total expenses and well within the industry standards for charitable organizations. This is a 6% reduction compared to 2019, and our heart is to continue keeping our operating costs as low as possible so we can direct as much financial support as possible toward the people and the communities that we serve. Next slide. This is the statement of cash flows. This chart shows cash flows for the past two years. There was a significant increase from 2019 due to a very large and unexpected volume of donations that came in during December 2020. Next slide, please. The 2020 fiscal year ended with assets of 577,000, an increase of 351% over 2019. Liabilities, the, the 2020 fiscal year ended with liabilities of 135,000, which is a 68% increase over 2019. Next slide. Uh, True North Aid continues to see its revenues increase year over year with a significant uptick in donations in 2020, with more than 1,700 donors giving more than $450,000 in December and November alone. The amount is equal to our entire 2019 revenue. You can see in this bar chart that the number of gifts received continues to grow month over month and year over year. For the 2017 fiscal year, we had 428 gifts, 2018, we had 942 gifts, 2019, 1,607 gifts, 
And in 2020, we had more than 4,800 gifts. A significant increase can be seen in this count, this bar, this count bar graph. Uh, next, uh, this is the gift month comparison of amounts. These increases also are also reflected in this bar graph that shows the continued revenue increase month over month and year over year. Next slide. And, and this is just shows the uh, gift count by province. So here you can see that 70% of our donations are over the past four years have come from the province of Ontario. However, this continues to change with growing donations from donors in other provinces and other countries like the UK and the United States. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Kenneth. Thank you, uh, Tamara. Uh, Tamara looks after all our book bookkeeping and financial management, and we appreciate the good work that she does. Um, I just wanna show you this chart. Um, we're absolutely humbled at True North Aid by how many uh, individual donors give. Um, and you can see here that a large volume of our donations are still small donations, um, small and yet very significant, uh, whether somebody gives $10, $50, $100 or $500, um, still a large volume of our donations are individuals um, and families who, who believe in our mission and, and give generously month over month and, and year over year. Uh, next slide. So here we see the foundational stones of support um, that we established in 2018. All of our projects and activities um, fall under one of these eight stones and we encourage our donors to direct uh, their funding to one um, of these eight foundational stones or our general fund. What this does is it allows us the flexibility to, to redirect monies within a fund should a project, um, a particular project fall short of its budget uh, for a multitude of reasons, um, including many generous donations, don donors who come along and provide gift in kind donations or services to help cover that project and, and fulfill the need. And so now we're able to redirect that money to other activities that fall within the mandate of, of that particular fund. And that has worked very well for us. So you'll see here in this pie graph that 52% of our donors um, give to the general fund and allow the True North Aid team to decide how then to direct those monies um, to various activities and projects. Um, okay, so next slide. At this time, um, I would like to introduce to you Marilyn Schuert. Um, I did make mention of her earlier, but she's been uh, volunteering uh, with True North Aid over the last couple of years, um, thanking our donors. As a charity, we understand that donor acknowledgement is key to donor uh, retention, and uh, Marilyn does just that. And so Marilyn, would you take a couple of minutes and uh, share with the folks tonight on uh, your good work in thanking and engaging with our donors? Uh, yes, I would love to do that. Um, I've been with True North Aid for a couple of years, and it's a real privilege for me to uh, respond to our, our donors and uh, by way of thank you letters. And we've just seen a lot of statistics on uh, who gives and how much they give, but I'd like to tell you about some of the people behind that. And uh, so I just want to share some of the responses from our donors, which I find very exciting when they get back and, and uh, acknowledge uh, our response to them. So at True North Aid, there's uh, no age limit. We get money from children from their birthdays that they just want to give their money. And we have uh, a gift from 97-year-old Dorothy that just really wanted to give to our worthy cause. And we wrote her back and told her that that's probably why she's enjoying such a wonderful life. Others are moved by uh, our needs. Uh, one person wrote and said, thank you for your message. About 10 years ago, I decided to concentrate my charitable donations primarily on indigenous causes. I came upon your group by accident and having looked into your activities, I'm happy to see that True North Aid will exactly fill my expectations. That's so exciting to hear 
that even though they stumble upon us, we're very clear in our mandate and our mission. Um, people write back to tell us they like to hear from us and that really gives me a lot of pleasure. One lady said, I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate your personal emails. It means a lot these days to receive it from you. I will also continue to spread the world the word about your wonderful organization. And I love this one. It's on the slide. This lady wrote and said, thank you for your email, which reminded me to donate every, uh, even more, which I just did. Isn't that awesome? Some donate because they know from experience what we do. A lady wrote and said, I'm particularly happy to be able to support Moontime Sisters. I was a Northern girl once and I wrote back and said, you know, thank you so much. That's special because you really understand what uh, part of what we're doing. And then Ken was saying that there's no amount too small. So many of our donations are smaller and I just wanna highlight a couple of these brand new donors. In November, we had someone who made um, a first time gift of $1 and they've continued to donate a dollar a month since then. We had another new uh, donor in December in among the thousands of dollars that we received in December and this person donated 60 cents. And every month since then, we get a 60 cent donation. And uh, another lady who wrote in and she apologized for her little gift and saying she was sending a lot of love with it. It was $3 and she wanted to go uh, on monthly donation. And we thanked her for that donation, told her that no gift is too small, it's a heart of love. And that's what we're all about, isn't it? Our donors are informed, we've had uh, people write us and say they researched us. This one said, I researched the charity. The work you do is incredible. Thank you for sharing this with me and acknowledging my donation. Um, many are joining us by spreading the word. I had a lady write and say, thank you for this lovely message. It was my pleasure to feature the work of such an incredible organization on my podcast. Thank you for all you do. Isn't that awesome? And then others are helping us raise funds. Um, a lady wrote and said, I do hair out of my home. I, I ran a little giveaway and raised $680. We wrote back and told her what an awesome initiative that was and that the money she had raised, she could be very proud of. And now my favorite, this one I just love. I got a note that said, <clears throat> I found a brand new $20 bill in the snow today. I couldn't wait to get home and send it your way. And we responded and said, it, I said, this made my heart leap when I read your note. What a kind and generous thing to do. I'm hoping that you find more unexpected blessings because of this. See, I'm getting all teary. <laughs> I love what I do. Anyways, that's just an example of, of some of the um, notes that we get back. And that's our hope for all of you who support our mission, that you find many unexpected blessings because of your generosity. We already know that you've caught the vision and are working hand in hand with us. Thank you. We can't express in words how much you are appreciated. That's it, Ken. That's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Marilyn. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, everybody. Um, so I think here we have a slide of some of our major con contributors and we want to thank each and every one of them for their very generous donations uh, and support, um, uh, you know, throughout the past year. As you can see, for those of you who've been to a few of these meetings, this list keeps growing. Um, Ken, anything you want to say about that or? Yeah, we'll let Amanda, Amanda actually uh, go through this slide here. Oh, yes. Okay, perfect. I'll turn it over to Amanda then for this. Now, I have so much to say about these wonderful donors and contributors for 2020 and 2021. We've really built relationships with pretty much each and every one of them, whether they've contributed money. So, for example, Amazon.ca donated $159,000 last year towards our food fund, and they also helped us um, show our list off of what we needed. So baby supplies, blankets, towels, um, formula, anything like that. Um, they put it on their um, Amazon 
uh, deliveries list, um, smile, delivering smiles campaign um, back in end of 2020 around Christmas. And we were overwhelmed. Um, actually, Glenn Warner of Capital Movers, which I, is on this list, he was overwhelmed with all these boxes because people purchase these um, diapers on our behalf. So we have to thank Amazon Canada for that. We also have to thank Waldo Nessa Insurance for the $100,000 donation last year. Um, the Health Earth COVID-19 Fund, which I'll go over a little later, but each and every one of these um, contributors that you see, they either carry the mission of True North Aid and are kind of an extension of us almost, like Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, which sends up books to you, babies, I guess, zero to five to um, inform uh, early learning and um, for kids just by sending them a book every single month. So we, we sponsor um, the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to get these books in the hands. So we Project Northern Lights. There's so many, so many great um, people that we work with. So on Fire helps us get some shipments of clothing and all great supplies up north. I also want to point out honoring Indigenous people, specifically Rotor, um, Strini Reddy, who is part of that. Um, he contacted me last year and said, hey, I have a community that kind of needs your help. And so we kind of, we formed a friendship from there and we been able to work with so many different Manitoba communities that you'll be able to see um, just momentarily, but all these people have, all these groups have contributed or helped True North Aid and the people that we serve um, in, in so many different ways. So we have to thank them and um, go from there. So we also worked on our COVID-19 emergency fund, whether that was, you know, um, sending PPE supplies, supporting Garden Hill with their COVID-19 emergency, which um, as you can see here was a quote from one of the, Jessica Beardy, who led one of the crisis teams there. Their community in Manitoba had over 700 cases of COVID, at least half their community, I believe, um, had COVID. And so it was just a major outbreak. And when COVID happens in these Northern communities, um, everything shuts down. You have no access to the stores. Um, shipments coming in and out of the community are very, very limited. I believe they also had military support. So everyone was stuck in their houses without being able to go out. So we were able to provide some dry goods. As you can see, probably in the picture, there's spaghettis, I think, and uh, flour and baking soda, stuff that could last them throughout this lockdown that they were in, which can be really, again, extensive too, where they're not allowed leaving their homes unless you're a worker. So Anyway, she said, on behalf of Garden Hill First Nation, we want to say thank you um, to True North Day for the generosity and all the help you sent her way during this difficult time in our community. Words are simply not enough to say how much it means to us that you would take the time to help us. Everything you sent to us has been a huge help with our alternative isolation area and our community members that are under isolation. We sent games to the AIA and some places where there are a lot of kids at the home, so able to entertain the kids and the members that were isolating from their families. So I think that's really important. Um, we've also worked with uh, Finding Our Power Together and Project Northern Lights to support communities in Northern Ontario and uh, Northern Manitoba with the Kiwatin Tribal Council. So we can't do those things without them. We also supported some our Learning From Home campaign, which I'll talk about later, and um, Off the Land Learning Program, which helps to get kids outdoors during COVID um, and you know, not be stuck inside the classroom where it, maybe transmission could be a high risk there. But um, a lot of these communities have made it really, um, have done a really good job trying to keep COVID out of their community and, and doing those lockdown measures. So I'll end it with that part. Um, I just wanna show you this massive map of Canada and each little blue dot you see there um, is where we've supported someone. Um, in 2020 alone, we saw over 80 shipments of supplies, which were equated to 190 pallets. Uh, we it saw excessive growth through Manitoba. And, and I want to thank Strini Reddy definitely for that. And also um, the Assembly of Manitoba Nations that helped the word out about some of our programs as well. But um, we've got lots of volunteers all over the country and uh, definitely helped to make those connections as well. We just introduced ourselves into none of it or RV at none of it where they did have a massive outbreak of COVID, but this lady had a connection and said, hey, I want to send some furs. And they figured out that they needed furs up there. So they're, we sent help to send those furs up to RV at none of it. And now they're going to refurbish these furs uh, into clothing and of their whatever they need. So it's really cool to see um, 
our extension. There should be more pointed out on the James Bay Coast or along the Quebec side because the Moon Time Sisters have done a lot of deliveries there. So it's even more than what you're seeing on this map. And so I'll share some mini reports with you. I am, here we go. Uh, so our learning from home campaign, we introduced that last year and started giving backpacks to uh, Canoe Lake, a First Nation. They were experiencing COVID and having to lock down their schools and the school and the students didn't have the supplies to really learn from home and have the tools to do their workbooks and that. So, um, and you can see there's tons of pictures in this um, with the kids in their backpacks, which lots of smiling faces. Um, you can see what was in the backpacks, so some pretty quality supplies. Um, thanks to Bargains Group and Begs in Bulk and Start Right Supplies in Saskatchewan. So we were able to deliver over 1,500 backpacks and school supplies over to Minnesquin, Saskatchewan, Sandy Bay, Peter, Valentine First Nations, Canoe Lake First Nation, Buffalo River, um, Buffalo Narrows is coming up, Wallace and Lake in Saskatchewan, Tatasquayak First Nation in Manitoba, the Paul Friendship Center, and Laloche and Clearwater River in, in Saskatchewan. So lots of Saskatchewan communities. Um, Here's a quote from one of our friends in Janelle. She's been awesome to work with. Once again, I would like to share how blessed and thankful we all are on the wonderful donations. Turn North Aid has given so many happy hearts to the people of Minnesquin Lake Cree Nation. On behalf of the community and myself, we are truly thankful for it all. And now I have a video from Canoe Lake saying thank you. That's a kakio. Nipawana Sigasun, Nihio Fa Sikse, Treaty 10 Territory, Mamina. Hi, my name is Arliss Kalinir, my name is Standing Rock, and I'm coming from the Canoe Lake Cree First Nation, and I am the principal of the Canoe Lake Mixwood School here on ceded uh, Treaty 10 Territory. And with that, I'd like to thank you, and our children want to thank you, our students, for the wonderful gifts you've given. Your donations are much appreciated. In an ask him to know all. Hi, hi. Good morning. My name is Adele Iron. I'm the elementary vice principal for Kino Lake Mixer School. We would like to say thank you to your generous donation. Uh, we were really excited packing the uh, backpacks, and the excitement did not stop there. When they were delivered to the students, they were very happy to receive the items that you sent. Once again, thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Geraldine Rediron. I am the vice principal at Canoe Lake School. I'm very grateful that we participated in True North Aid. They were helpful, they were kind, they were generous, and it made, it made a huge difference to meeting our learning needs of our community. As you can see in the pictures, our students are so happy that they were gifted with this wonderful things, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. So thank you very much for everything. Hi, hi. So it's nice to um, get letters or and, and um, videos just like that, just showing their appreciation. We always jump around and we might cry <laughs> over some of the uh, some of the pictures that um, they'll send us, which is it's just really sweet. So um, thanks, Geraldine, for that. All right. And that's a cocktail. There we go. And sorry if you hear Facebook in the background. It's Facebook Live is streaming and I have to keep an eye on it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so one of our huge projects, it was big logistically. It was, uh, we actually, Kim Sigurdsson helped me out. Um, he's on our board with uh, picking some communities to get some flour um, that were really remote. But uh, last year we, we sent over 101,412 pounds of flour. Um, not just last year, when we started November to a couple of weeks ago, where we sent some of the picandry gum. So over 25 communities were supported with flour. And the reason why we chose flour is it's considered a staple in a lot of these communities. And uh, so the flour that we sent was sent was used for cultural events and cooking workshops, went to food banks to serve those that needed it. Uh, tribal councils and other programs and I don't know how many times that we were messaged back once the flower was received of how many happy people there were to receive the flower so you can see in the bottom left corner that's from Buffalo Narrow School on their cultural days and you see some kids learning how to bake lay I think 
Um, I know they big banned it as well that day, but you, you can see those are big bags. So each pallet uh, had 50 bags of flour, each for 20 kilograms each. And so we sent that all the way up to um, now yet none of it um, to the territories, to Alberta, to Manitoba, to Saskatchewan, to Ontario, either by flying it, which was a fun endeavor, um, and getting it over there. So it was a fun project and we're continuing to do so this year. Our Moon Time Sisters project has really vamped up. Um, lots of exciting updates there. And it's really communities coming together, individuals that say, hey, I wanna get some of these menstrual supplies. It's such a necessity in the North and it's so hard to come by. But now Moon Time Sisters has collected over 1 million products for Northern communities across Canada. They've partnered with communities in several provinces and territories. And they said there's 50 plus communities in total that have benefited from Moon Time Sisters shipments. So way to go, Veronica, way to go, Nicole. Um, we also are launching two new chapters in British Columbia, which British Columbia was a couple months ago. So good job, Carly. And uh, Manitoba is launching very soon. They're doing a quick fundraiser, by the way, to raise $2,000 um, for $2,805 for Moon Time Sisters launch for Manitoba. So lots of great things. It's so cool to see so many people coming together just to raise menstrual products, something that's so, um, you just probably walk by the grocery store, don't even think twice about. Katie Koopman, it's your turn. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, to our donors, our sponsors, the board, True North Aid staff and volunteers, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, so my name is Katie and I am the project lead of Good Ally Project or GAP out of Kingston, Ontario. And um, it's been a slow year due to COVID, but um, we kind of found our feet back in February. And it um, we kind of launched a project called Res Reads. Um, a young woman out of Abnatung First Nation, also known as Fort Hope, and located 360 kilometers um, north of Thunder Bay. Um, this young woman, Kay, she was looking for books for her and her five children to read, especially during isolation times. And um, knowing her a little bit, I thought, well, this is something that I could get behind here in Kingston. At the same time, we had this request and was pondering how to sort of flesh out how we would do this. Um, a dear friend of mine, Kevin Smith, passed away. And Kevin um, was, uh, he loved literacy, he loved books, and he was a generous giver of his books. He would give them away on Facebook, say, anybody want any of these 10 that I'm finished? And he loved True North Aid. He was a generous giver to True North Aid and um, supporting the projects my husband and I have done. So it just turned out that through a bit of a teaser post of what I was going to do in his honor and um, honoring Kay's request and with Kevin's uh, family's permission, um, Indigo got a hold of this request because what happened was his daughter, Christine, works at Indigo Kingston. So Indigo contacted me. They said, hey, let us be a location drop off for a month for um, gently used books that we would fly north to Abnatung First Nation. Now, uh, on the other side of this, we created a template um, sort of application for families in this community up north to apply for um, genres of literature. So we could specifically curate boxes of books for families who are interested according to age level and interest of genres. So it was um, definitely a bit more of an intimate project um, since Abnatung First Nation and Fort Hope is very close to my heart. So over a month period, this is what happened. We collected approximately 2,300 pounds of books. The reason why I know this is because uh, the first pallet of books was 750 pounds. 
three of those pallets. Um, so not only could we send a pallet of books, which was approximately 27 boxes of books to um, Fort Hope, but we were also able to bless two other communities with books. So that goodness of people um, from Kingston and who had who had bought into this project, it spilled over into other communities. So that is some really good news. Um, but alongside this, Indigo wanted to go further. They had us set up a registry of indigenous curated authored books and people were encouraged to buy new books that also went into these boxes to give to families. So not only were families given used books according to their genres that they requested, but they were given indigenous books all the way from toddler board books to adult fiction and in between. So that was huge. Now what that registry did for every single book purchased. Indigo's love of reading matched that. So I have in my house that I need to gift somewhere are 290 extra books that Indigo has mailed to me. Now, one partnership that I am looking forward to is expanding to Teach for Canada. Teach for Canada pairs um, future teachers with specific communities in the north. And I would love to gift these boxes of books to these teachers so that they can build on their own library up north. So it's a really beautiful circle of goodness, uh, of literacy and just love of reading that people have given into. I know people are already collecting for next year and Indigo uh, wants to do this again next February. So Good LA Project was busy with that and uh, we have some more things on the go for this year um, and that's it from me. Thanks, Katie. You're awesome. Uh, thanks so much for doing that. It's always fun to work with you in Kingston. I'm so glad we live <laughs> like live close to each other. <laughs> kind of. Um, anyways, next slide. So this is kind of um, something close to my heart. Uh, we established really close relationships with two chiefs councils in Thunder Bay. Um, each represent, I think KO Chiefs represents about five, six different communities, and if not, represents nine communities. And so we went to Thunder Bay a couple of years ago, met up with Michelle and, the, her, and Karen and the team there. Karen moved on to IFNA, so we were actually able to send um, one of our largest shipments ever, 31 pallets of wheelchairs and walkers, up to these First Nations scum councils for them to distribute to um, members that really needed it. Some of them were having wheelchairs that were extremely old. Um, some were just can't afford it. Some, uh, you know, it just, it's hard to get an occupational therapist to, you know, come up, assess you for your wheelchair and, you know, as specialists aren't, um, aren't there as, uh, as often as they should be. Anyway, so we sent 31 pallets up over to the KO Chiefs and IFNA and so we're gradually, gradually getting reports because they're sending them as, as needed and um, gradually getting reports that, hey, this wheelchair went to Deer Lake to support um, the health center there. So it's really cool um, working with them and seeing that extension and finding new friends um, and new, new people to work with um, up in the North. It's so nice that we were able to keep that connection, especially Michelle after she had three triplets so, or had triplets. So, Nice to know that she came back and still thought of us um, for getting more medical supplies. So we'll be working with them. But I have to mention Roll Up because Roll Up is at a London, their Western University. There are a bunch of volunteer students that run this business. Um, they work with Goodwill Industries to refurbish these wheelchairs and walkers, make sure that they're in great shape. And they're pretty much new. They provide new cushions, um, they wrap and they palletize everything for us. So um, it's really great. I love working with Roll Up um, there. And they also are, we're continuing this project with um, First Nations uh, Health and Social Secretariat of Manitoba. We just sent a shipment of nine pallets, um, nine, no, six pallets um, to the hotel where people are quarantining from the north. So because a lot of people live in these big families, um, they'll have to come down to the north if they're, if they're somehow a contact with COVID or have COVID. So as you can see in the right picture, this is a hotel. And so they had a lot, a lot of elderly patients and like, yeah, we don't have anything. Are you able to help us? So we actually sent some wheelchairs and some canes and 
um, commodes and walkers uh, to the team. So that actually consisted of a bear clan that was helping them out, um, different people from the First Nations Health and Social, Social Secretariat. So it's really exciting now that we're getting more requests from communities that we're able to send up like two pallets at a time of wheelchairs, whatever they're needed. So it's really exciting. I love working with Roll Up and Goodwill out of London. Um, they're, they're really fun. And so this is a little pet project of mine that we've uh, got to send. And we're actually going to be working with more people in the future to send more medical supplies. So stay tuned. Next slide. All right. So this is one of the communities, two of the communities I've been able to build really close relationship with. Um, Nelson House, I call um, some friends there. They came up to me um, back in January and said, hey, we want to do these outdoor programs. They had the kids out in the land, they do some traditional hunting, do some traditional fishing, on all trapping, all that. And they're like, we just need the tools to do it. And so we were able to help provide fishing supplies and trapping supplies. As you can see, there's some kids with fish and they're learning how to gut a fish. Um, they're learning how to start fires, um, appropriate fires. And they're also learning how to just, you know, just do traditional hunting, traditional stuff. We're also helping the country foods program um, there as well, which actually helps to go have these hunters that go on the land and they bring back um, caribou, geese, fish, whatever, um, whatever is on the land and that they, they go in and they come back with all this meat they prepare it and then they give it out to families that are in need. So we help with that program as well. Um, so we're working really closely with Nelson House and um, Twin Lakes as well with the same type of program, which is that we're, we've are we never even thought of doing a program like this. And so this shows how important it is to listen and to say, hey, this is a self-determination project. You're teaching kids how to you know, continue on their culture, something that was taken away from them, but they're really regaining back um, through these programs. So it's really cool to get these pictures as well. I'll get pictures from my friend with like just caribou. It's like, hey, this is what we did today. I'm like, all right, <laughs> that's awesome. You see how happy the kids are. And so um, it's a really, I love working with the program. Xena is great in Buffalo Narrows as well. And so we're actually helping to build an outdoor classroom so that they can go outside and do this kind of stuff uh, in the winter time so they don't complain that they're cold, but also don't make a mess and they can just be outside and, and do this uh, type of stuff and that it's more appropriate to do outside uh, anyway. So um, it's a great program. We love it. All right, Ken, did you want to talk about Lightning Dawn? Yes, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> thank you very much. There's so much we could share um, tonight and we really just needed to highlight um, some of the, the, the key projects that we've been up to, but there certainly is so much more. Um, just quickly to mention Lightning Dawn, we've been working with Ty over the last year and a half uh, with OM Hockey Systems to develop sh um, a Lightning Dawn scholarship program. And really um, the heart of the Lightning Dawn program is to uplift First Nations youth um, through the many benefits that come with um, uh, playing hockey. Um, it increases self-worth, confidence, discipline, and leadership ability. And so um, we're excited to launch phase two of our Lightning Dawn uh, scholarship program alongside OM Hockey Systems out in Alberta. And we hope that program will continue to grow uh, to um, uh, serve more northern remote communities. So really excited about investing in the lives of youth through through development programs like this and others um, that we currently have um, going on. Um, Amanda, do you want to, um, to go to the next slide? Here's just a list of so many of the other projects uh, that we've been working on. Uh, so many of these projects being led by individuals throughout Canada. Uh, we're so grateful for the project leads who volunteer uh, their time uh, to uh, engage uh, with Northern communities, build relationship, and, uh, and to assist with uh, raising the funds and the donations that are needed. Um, you know, a, a lot of our projects aren't, aren't necessarily managed by the staff, but they're managed by volunteers and volunteer groups throughout the country. And we come alongside to support uh, and empower them to do what they're doing, whether they're from the North or from the South. And despite COVID, um, yes, there have been a lot of, of uh, plans that have been changed at True North Aid, a lot of programs that have been put on pause. Um, 
it hasn't stopped us uh, from sending uh, tens of thousands of pounds of humanitarian aid to communities right across the country. And so we are so grateful uh, to those who serve and support us in, in a multitude of ways. So, and now we've got Emily Everett. I was gonna share one more thing, Ken. Okay, for <laughs> sure. I'm sorry, I just wanted to share these photos. You can see the impact that we've done. One of the highlights was the Kenora Makwa Patrol. It was a patrol van to help vulnerable people living in that area. And I also want to share this picture because this is all the many faces of True North Aid. Um, but lastly, I really thought this was a really impactful um, response that we got from the community. And this is from um, a hockey drive that was done by um, a few folks in Oakville. Um, and this is a response. Basically, we were able to provide hockey equipment and skates and all that um, to start a hockey program and a skate program in Fred, um, St. Teresa Point First Nation. So it's, uh, this one always gets me. So let's get through it. <laughs> Without the generosity of your organization, many of the young people would have never had the opportunity to own a pair of nice, a nice pair of skates, let alone a full hockey gear. With the high cost of living in a remote community, donations such as hockey equipment, which is extremely expensive, as you know, is that much more appreciated. There are many young parents express their gratitude for the gifts they receive for their children. Treat all children with dignity and respect. Show them patience, kindness, and love they rightfully deserve, and they will show us contentment, peace, and hope for a better tomorrow. And I think you did that for our youth. And that was from Freddie Wood. He was the education director. Um, St. Teresa Point. So I just want to say I love my job. I love the staff. I love the volunteers that I work with. So I'm really grateful to work for um, an amazing organization that does this kind of work. Um, lots of new friends, lots of new relationships, and lots of good work coming ahead. So thank you all for helping. Now Emily Everett. Hi. Um, so my name is Emily Everett and I recently joined the True North Aid team as a Logistics and Project Development Director. And I have the pleasure to um, just kind of give you a very brief snapshot of some of the upcoming projects and partnerships that, I, that we have coming in the, in the coming months. So this summer we are supporting the Meshkegawak Council in Northern Ontario in their efforts to ensure the success of their food preservation projects for their eight communities by supplying things like butcher paper, jars, metal cans, picking supplies, and more. Um, and True North Aid is proud to be working with the Lego Replay Program, an important project that will help connect children living in Pengazi and Little Grand Rapids in Manitoba with fun and creative ways to learn and grow with Lego. In order to address the technological divide and support students through online learning, we are partnering with Living Hearts and Cell Device to send used but in good condition devices preloaded with educational resources to schools we're partnering with in the North. Another way we will be supporting students is by partnering with Bargains Group and teachers at Igloolik High School in Nunavut to provide backpacks and supplies, making it easier for students to participate in remote learning. An incredibly exciting opportunity that is in its early stages is the Indigenous Youth Opportunities Program or IOP which supports Indigenous youth who lead or desire to lead mental health and wellness programs within their communities. By providing micro-grants to candidates, True North Aid is empowering youth in expressing and articulating their own wellness journeys through interest-based activities, ranging from art, music, sports, to traditional cultural and land-based strategies. IOP is currently piloting this project with eight youth guided by mentors and will be opening up applications in the fall. Also in its early stages is our partnership with the Northern Farm Training Institute in Hay River, North of Territories, and working on the production of stable, stable potato seeds, an incredible development in the drive for food sovereignty across Northern Canada. And lastly, maybe we'll go to the next slide, Amanda. In response to a very frequent request that comes in, we are in the process of launching a national mattress campaign uh, to help provide communities with a good night's sleep. We're starting this project in Jean Marie River, a community which recently experienced severe flooding, leaving many homeless and in living in temporary shelters. In response to this emergency, True North Aid is providing 30 mattresses and their accompanying foundations and pillows. So these are just a few of the many awesome projects that we have coming up in the, in the coming months. So make sure you stay tuned for updates. And that's all from me. You're on mute, Ken. I'm sure you're saying really wonderful things, so. 
Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm sorry. This is Kim here. I'm coming live and direct from Treaty 3 territory in northwestern Ontario, where oh, Kim. Where our, where sorry. our uh, that's okay, sorry. Scott. Okay. Am, am I coming through? Yep. Oh, great. Yeah, it's Kim here. I uh, I have the honor of sitting on the board of directors of True North Aid and. Uh, as I said, I'm currently sitting here in Treaty 3 territory out in the bush, heading up to Pecanchicum, where we uh, just finished off sending some flour. I call it the Bannock Express. Um, as they were saying earlier, flour is a staple, and uh, Bannock is one of the best things we have as Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. Everybody claims to be uh, have their own recipe and make it the best. Uh, I currently think I am, but uh, I have it, but we are doing some great things. I'm so proud of, uh, of being a part of this whole organization. I have the great opportunity of seeing what's going on, see how, how some of these um, shipments of, of flour or, or clothing, medicine, whatever we send up, PPE, I have the opportunity of seeing these things land once in a while. And, or I get a chance to meet the people who have who have had these uh, gifts and, you know, the majority of them don't get a chance to say thank you. And I'm going to say thank you for them. We are doing some wonderful things for indigenous people. And um, I, you know, I just that loss of words. Uh, it, it is just such a overwhelming, great experience. And I really want to thank everybody who's donating to our, to our organization. Those, those uh, we were talking about earlier about all these, you know, the, the, the $10, the $20, the $25 donations. Some people may think that's uh, a, a very small amount of money. When you put them all together, it's a huge amount of money. And um, I just uh, wanted to let you know that we are doing the best we can with your donations. We are certainly changing the lives of people and helping them out in, 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 in times when COVID uh, that are that are very stressful. I just want to go into a, a story. Uh, it was up in Picanchicum and we were talking to some people who had some flour and they were locked up in their homes. The, uh, there's 400 homes in Picanchicum, roughly, I don't know, 3,500 people. So do the arithmetic. You're looking at eight or nine, 10 people per home and they're locked down. It's very difficult for them. So these gifts that we send up there mean everything. And I, like I say, I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I uh, thank you all for donating. Keep, the, keep those donations coming in and we'll keep doing our job and serving these indigenous people up in Northern Ontario. Thank you very much for your time and miigwech. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. Appreciate uh, you and all the good work that you do and, and representing us on the board of directors and, and uh, you're a, a wealth of, uh, of, of help uh, as, you, as you're so well connected uh, throughout Northern Canada. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to mention very quickly, uh, as an aid organization, our heart is to support self-determination. We believe that the end of the day, self-governance self and self-determination is the key to alleviating poverty. So whatever we can through our activities, our programs and our projects uh, to empower Indigenous peoples to realize their dreams, not our dreams, their dreams, um, and to come alongside to serve and support them, uh, that's exactly what we want to be doing. And we see that each and every day. And so a huge shout out to um, our friends uh, throughout the North um, who we work alongside um, as they then in turn empower um, and support their, the people um, in their communities. So also I wanna draw your attention. Um, last year, um, we lost uh, two uh, precious individuals. George Woodward was a former executive director of True North Aid who had built so many uh, relationships with, uh, with key individuals throughout the North and, and paved the way for the success that we're experiencing today. And so uh, thank you, George, uh, for your tireless work efforts and your continued encouragement and support in the years following your tenure um, as, as director of True North Aid. Uh, we're truly grateful for the legacy that he left. And uh, I know I still have indigenous elders and friends through the North calling me asking, 
um, are talking about George and, and remembering back to the times where they've, they've met him, uh, whether it be by phone or, or he traveled a number of times uh, throughout the North. So thank you, George. Um, and we, we really miss you. Also, Lola Lawton uh, was a volunteer. Uh, we worked with her um, alongside her Relay for Hunger and Polar Run uh, for Piawanek um, Project and so many others. But um, Lola was incredible as she uh, hand packed um, a multitude of pallets in her backyard um, of donations um, and helped uh, source um, thousands of pounds of, of food donations from various agencies and organizations. And uh, I could tell you so many stories, so many Lola stories, but um, we are truly sad uh, to have heard of her passing last year. Um, and she, she was working and doing, um, serving and supporting Northern communities right up until the end. And so we're so grateful for Lola and, um, and the legacy that she left here in Canada. Uh, she was so passionate about the challenges um, and the inequalities that, that Indigenous peoples face uh, throughout Canada's North and did everything she could to try and make a difference. And so thank you, Lola, uh, for, um, for your partnership. You will be missed. Thank you, Ken. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our agenda, unless there's anything I've missed. Um, uh, so with that, I, I want to really thank everybody who took the time to be with us tonight uh, and also want to thank anybody who happens to watch this video later on our website, which will be posted um, and uh, people will have a chance to see the great work that's ha that, that has happened in the past 12 months. Uh, as someone who's been on the board for the past five years and has and been the chair for the last few, uh, I, I really want to celebrate the evolution of the work that has happened. It's incredible this year to see just the transformative nature of the work that's going on. Um, you know, for those of you who've joined us over the last number of years, you'll see some common themes and some common projects. But if you're like me, you'll have noticed a significant growth in the number of communities served, in the number of donations that are coming in, and the reach that we're having, and the relationships we're building uh, to have sustainable, make a sustainable difference in the communities that we serve. Uh, this is an exciting journey, and I believe True North Aid has got so much more ahead, and so we look forward to uh, continuing to come back to you, continuing to share with you the great uh, results of the work that we're doing, and um, we want to thank each and every person for whatever contribution you make. Uh, whether you're a volunteer um, putting in countless hours doing something that you're extremely passionate about, whether the, you're, you're the staff members doing exactly the same thing, whether you're donors uh, who are reaching deep into your pockets and making a difference, even the little differences as we talked about uh, that go so far and speak to your hearts. Um, we hope that you're encouraged by what you've heard tonight, and it's certainly we would welcome any feedback from anybody in terms of what we can do to continue to grow this wonderful organization and to continue to serve the many needs that are out there. Uh, in as much as our reach has grown exponentially, I think there's even more left ahead in terms of, uh, of need in the communities uh, and, uh, and opportunities for us to build relationships and to, and to make a difference in the lives of those that we serve. So with that, I want to thank everybody and wish you all the best and uh, look forward to seeing you on the True North Aid journey. Take care, all. I'd just like to thank everyone at True North Aid. You guys are incredible, and that's the best annual report I've ever been at. <laughs> and I've been at a lot. Thank you, Doris. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'll, I'll email you later. Or chat with okay. You. okay. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Night. <laughs> Good night.